What happened to your Fuji film? So I posted this photograph and someone said, what happened to your Fuji film? And I know exactly what they mean. <laughs> hey guys over here. I thought today I would discuss something interesting that happens on YouTube. And this was brought up by um, Gerald Undun, who did a video on like things he learned uh, being on YouTube for many years. And one of them was very interesting to me because it happens to me that people will find my channel at different times. So uh, there's no continuity on YouTube, meaning they'll just stumble upon one of my videos and that's the universe I exist in. Even though the, the video is dated 20, 2018 at the bottom, it doesn't matter. So um, I thought I would take this video to sort of share what Fujifilm I'm using, what cameras I'm using, and the same message you keep hearing, it doesn't really matter. It just doesn't matter! It just doesn't matter! It just doesn't matter! I also find the comment funny because it was, the comment was, uh, what happened to your Fujifilm? And I had the same day just released a video about using the Fujifilm X-T20 on a trip to, to Portugal, uh, which by the way, stay tuned. I am working on a video right now on that, showing you my trip and showing you how I use the Fujifilm X-T20 and its limitations, how I got around its limitations when traveling with an old camera. So stay tuned for that video. Subscribe, you know, hit the little, <laughs> hit the little bell. All right, so I also, um, I, I don't like making videos like this because I don't want it to seem like I'm flexing. It's more to show you, um, on this side, I will show you stuff that has worked for me if you're interested in being a working photographer or shooting events, that's what I do, and portraits. And on this side, we have all the play stuff. So over here, it's because of the YouTube channel. It's because I have older Fujifilm cameras to test older sensors. And some of the cameras I just like. I just like having them and they're like kind of like collector stuff. So let's start with the Fujifilm cameras that I have. The first Fujifilm camera I ever owned was an X100S, and that was because of Zach Arias, who shot Fujifilm and was amazed by the files. And I love Zach Arias, so I was like, whatever he's telling me, I'm gonna do. <laughs> and that was maybe, he was the first influencer that influenced me. And I wanna bring that up too, because a lot of people will ask me, which camera should I buy? Because they wanna hear it from me. A lot of times it may be validating their own purchase uh, decisions. I don't like telling people what to buy because the camera that works for me may not work for you. Now, first of all, the camera after the X100S that I bought was this Fujifilm X-T20, which was in 2017. And I'm about to have my six year channel anniversary on this, you know, when I first started with this camera. I kind of like semi-retired this camera, almost like as a symbol. This was the camera that started the channel. And I will use it occasionally as a black and white noir camera. If you haven't seen that old video, I made a video about how you should make one old stinky little camera, a designated black and white camera that you pick up and shoot only JPEGs in black and white, check that video out. Or maybe it's the first video you're seeing <laughs> of mine. And then this Fujifilm X-T20, I bought for about $400 US uh, because it was in pristine condition. And this is the one I brought on my trip, it was a newer Fujifilm X-T20. So this is my favorite Fujifilm camera, the X-T20. And the reason is because I think 24 megapixels is perfect. I think that the sensor and the colors are a little off on this camera. Uh, I think that with the X-T3, X-T4, and X-T5, the colors are more accurate, more true to life. And this one is a little less true to life. I'll pick up my next favorite Fujifilm camera, the X-E2. The colors on this are even less based on reality, which makes these cameras more fun in my opinion because it's, it's like shooting film. It's like shooting film stock. The X-T20, I, my style is a little bit more punchy, a little bit more colorful, and the X-T20's Provia Raw in Lightroom is just one button, I touch it and I just love it. And then I also have the X-T2, too many cameras, and the X-T3. I almost sold the X-T3, which was stupid that I was thinking about selling it, uh, because I wanted the X-T5, and this, that would make this camera obsolete, like we've talked about in the past. 
And I realized that I like the 26 megapixel sensor. I don't like cameras that are uh, larger megapixels when they don't need to be. I don't print very large and I don't punch in and crop a lot except with wildlife. And in, I feel like Fujifilm's autofocus for wildlife is just frustrating. If I'm going to one location with one camera for photo and video, and it has to be a Fujifilm, it's the X-T3 I pick up. For weather sealed, sort of more fun, great X-Trans 3 sensor, the X-T2. Uh, but if I'm going out and shooting just photography, I usually pick the X-T20 because it's smaller. And then they have the Fujifilm X-70, which has the same sensor as the X-E2. Uh, the reason I bought the X-E2 is because I loved the sensor in the X-70. The X-70 is just a really fun little street camera. Uh, no viewfinder though, so uh, now with my vision going, <laughs> I either have to shoot this camera with reading glasses, uh, and every now and then I will stick it up to my eye and totally take my eye out. Uh, but I should shoot that camera more. There's a Sony over here. Oh, hanging out with the Fuji films, are ya? <laughs> this is the Sony ZV-1. I love this little camera for video and vlogging. Just because when you flip the screen open, it totally turns itself on. And uh, you can just hit record. I have it on full kind of auto. So I just hit record right now. And look, I'm recording myself. <laughs> and this is how I grab quick family videos and how I just document our life. And I also made a video on this guy, why it's kind of like the best little camcorder. I miss having a camcorder to grab moments, but this one's always, this Sony's always laying on a table and it doesn't need like a specific lens. You don't have to, it has a built-in ND filter if I want to turn that on. Most of the cameras in my office, the working ones and the play ones are all mirrorless cameras, except for a few DSLRs. And I don't want to let go of DSLRs because after shooting mirrorless, when I went back to the DSLR, I missed it. I actually missed the experience of shooting with DSLRs. So I actually have three DSLRs in the office. I have a classic from Nikon, which is the Nikon D700, just 12 megapixels. I also made a joke video on pretending that this camera was newly released. You could watch that. We're just gonna link every old video in this video. But this camera uh, just has a beautiful sensor and the colors are amazing. And it's just a throwback to how cameras are made. So it's a reminder of how robust and, you know, the all the buttons and dials and the effort that was put into making a real professional camera. And you know, some, sometimes now I pick up one of the new cameras and I'm a little sad that they're so light and they're kind of plasticky. So it's nice, the D700's a reminder of days of yore. <laughs> and the other one, which I have actually sold and rebought, what was I thinking? Um, just because I, again, I thought these cameras were obsolete. But then I went through my old files and I went through my old 5D Mark III files and I realized that this was the, for me, the pinnacle of Canon that I loved the images I was getting from the 5D Mark III. So recently in the summer when we went to Montreal, I took this almost as a joke and loved the images that came out of it. And I even rebought the 70 to 200 because I was like, man, this 70 to 200 version two the images are just so beautiful. I miss this combo. And the video I just did on the cityscapes, I brought this camera along, just the, the, the colors and the clarity and the workout you get. <laughs> Look at these guns. <laughs> so those were my play cameras. So what happened to your Fujifilm, Mr. Commenter? Nothing, they're here. When I go street photography, I grab the Fujifilm. If I'm going travel with the family, the Fujifilm in a little bag, Fantastic. That's what these cameras are great for. Um, you'll see comments from all over the place where people, you know, use these for professional work and that's totally awesome. For me, they, 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 I, I work in a lot of low light and I don't want to fight the noise. Some people are not bothered by the noise. I am. I want clean images that I could add noise to later in post. <laughs> all right. So that's the Fujifilm collection. Nothing has happened to it. It is still here. So what is going on with my professional work currently right now in 2023? Now I shoot mostly portraits and events and that's where I'm kind of portraits and events. Portraits <laughs> and events. For portraits, I 
kind of prefer the Nikon system right now. But for events and high stress and shooting 1.8 when it's dark through a crowd, I prefer the Sony system. And right now it's just a crossroad again, waiting to see what Nikon is doing with their autofocus system. What are they doing with its speed, reliability, and stickiness, but also how the system, the implementation of the system, because I've done videos on this before, I just did one. Here's another plug for a video on the A7IV's autofocus system that you have a thousand choices. They, there's a lot of um, redundancy in how you can, for example, have a single focus point. You can have a single focus point a bunch of different ways. You can have one that tracks, you can have one that's stuck forever in the middle. Nikon, I feel their design is very, it uh, forces you into their autofocus system. So right now, let's talk about my portrait setup slash backup event setup. Now I was shooting events with this for a while. It's just uh, kind of too many missed shots in dark rooms kind of thing. Now, by the way, people will always argue, hey, it's the skill of the photographer. Uh, it's not the gear, it's you. Yeah, but your chances of getting the shot with the Sony are increase exponentially. Like I'm going to get the shot at 1.8, shooting a 20 millimeter with the Sony while dancing, while smiling. <laughs> I can get the same shot with the Nikon Z6 II, but I have to shoot at 4.5, 5.6, just to be sure I have a, enough depth. And I'm probably not dancing and there's probably a little bead of sweat going down, but I could get the shot. That's the difference, is you have to pick what the best tool is for how you wanna work. I don't wanna stress. And that's why I picked the Sony for, we'll get to that, for the dancing, for the craziness. And so, uh, sorry, just jumping all over the place. Let's go to the portrait setup. This is the, one of the main reasons I am still with Nikon is this, man. <laughs> this is the 105 1.4. I don't like 135. I use an 85, but I find it kind of boring. 105, 105. I love this lens and uh, 105. Companies need to make 105 a little bit more. The Nikon Z6 II, love the sensor on this camera, 24 megapixels. The pictures are amazing, the colors are amazing. It also shoots amazing video if I wanna shoot some video. It's just when the going gets tough, there's lag in the EVF if you're shooting flash. The playback is slower than all the other cameras I've used. So if you want to check your exposure after your flash goes off and people, you know, like things are happening. <laughs> but if you're shooting portraits and you're shooting maybe a ceremony or if you're just shooting formals, ugh, man, this camera is so good. I love it. Another adapted lens, which I love, is this uh, 28 millimeter 1.4. I just bought this like as a fluke, like, hey, I don't want to go 35. I don't want to go 24. Let's go in the middle. FTZ adapter this puppy and the images that come from this are just beautiful the portraits It's like a wide but there's bokeh It's just a great look. I kind of like this look The problem is you try to shoot this when the DJ lights are going off and everything the FTZ with the, the Slowness with the it's hard to get shots, you know at 1.4 During a dance floor so that that's tough. I also have the 50 millimeter 1.8 for Nikon so that's kind of what I use for the Nikon system for portraits. And that's where I am right now in a crossroads where I'm shooting portraits with my Nikon gear. On the Sony side, I have the Sony a7C, which is recording me right now. For professional and two card slots, um, I got the a7 IV because I borrowed my friend Mo's a7 IV and I just did one event with it and I'm like sold. <laughs> I had so much fun at that event because I was kind of like bam, bam, bam. And it was all due to one of my favorite lenses is the, the Sony 20 millimeter 1.8. If you want to shoot receptions that kind of stand out, you could shoot 24 2.8 if you have a 24 to 70. But if you shoot 20 millimeters 1.8, it's just something about the photographs. That little extra wide bokeh, wide with bokeh is rare to get. And if you're, if you're nailing focus because of Sony's autofocus in low light, in any light, then you're having fun, you're getting images that you love, 
you know, I can move forward really quickly, it tracks, bam, 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 I can move backwards, it tracks. And the other thing is my, like I said, my vision is going, so a lot of times I will stick the camera in a crowd, hit the eye autofocus and just hit it, fire a couple of shots and it gets people in peak emotion. Another plug, I did a video on peak emotion and uh, the importance of that as an event photographer. And I feel I wasn't getting peak emotion with the Nikon Z6 II. I get gorgeous portraits with it. I get gorgeous tempo sessions with it. Beautiful light, goldy rich colors. But if you're gonna get the shot, you wanna 100% get the shot. Let me know if you know that reference. Um, get the shot! The Sony is also great because it has so much more customizability than the Nikon Z6 II. You can actually just program the camera like a spaceship. Anything can do anything you want, any button. <laughs> and it has the three dial. The three dial system is my favorite. Shutter, aperture, and ISO are three dials that I use. And they're here, look, in a little exposure triangle. Mm, I see what you did there, Sony. With the Nikon, there's two dials. So that means that ISO has to be changed by pushing down a button and then spinning one of the same dials. I don't like that. The Tamron lenses are incredible. One of them right now is filming me. That's the 28 to 75. And this lens I've been using a little less because of the 20 millimeter 1.8, but the 17 to 28 is a great Tamron lenses. I've had, these are the original ones. I have not gotten rid of them because they are so good. And that's another great thing about the Sony system is you can use these third party cheaper lenses and get great results. Like this 85 millimeter 1.4, I'm not sure how I feel about this lens yet. I haven't used it enough. So far, I've been using the 85 during dance floor, sort of just towards the end of the night when things are sort of getting crazy. I will take out the 85 1.4 and just get cool shots like that with the 85. And the surprise lens of the year. So I decided to try the 55 millimeter 1.8. I love it. I think it's got a quality you can't explain. This is one of those lenses where it just, you. What, I keep saying, like I'll see a picture from it, I'll be like, what took this? Oh, it's the 55 again. What, which lens did I use here? Oh, it's the 55 again. And it's just kind of maybe it's, you know, an older lens, that could be it. It does have a little bit of chromatic aberration, which you can fix in post, no problem, but it has a look that I like and I'm enjoying using it. Look how light this setup is here, you know? If you wanna go vertical right there. <laughs> So what happened to my Fujifilm? Nothing. It's right over there. And that's what this story was about.